Hi, I'm BeardScript, developer of Rogue Engine. In this tutorial, we're going to be making an Arcanoid game from start to end in Rogue Engine. In this first part, we're going to learn how to use a Rogue Engine editor, add physics, download extensions, create some components, and add some simple game mechanics. By the end of the tutorial, you'll also know how to use HTML and CSS to build some UI for your game. You'll also learn how to script game logic, add touch controls, and finally, export your game for the web. To follow along, you'll need to download Rogue Engine at rogueengine.io just hit download and follow the instructions. You'll also need a code editor, whatever you already use is fine. I use VS Code, I'll leave you a link in the description in case you want to use the same. If you've never written a line of code in your life, just copy what I do. We're gonna write some very simple code anyway, so you should be just fine. All right, let's get to it. So we'll start off with an empty project. The first thing we need to do is set up our scene by removing the things we don't need. So we'll click on this cube here and do Control backspace to remove it. In our hierarchy here, we have the objects that are present in our scene. We can right click on the sunlight and remove it because we don't need it. Now, we also don't need the skybox here in the back. So we'll go up here to the skybox tab. And as you can see, there's an enabled checkbox. Let's click on that and it's gone. Now that we have our scene ready, we can save it. Our scenes are saved in files that we can load within our project. So here we have the assets folder. We'll go into the icon view here. We're going to right click assets folder and name it scenes. So here now in the tree view, we can see the scenes folder, right? And in the icon view, we can see when we select assets, we can see our scenes folder here as well. So now here, with the scenes folder selected, we're going to do Ctrl S to save the scene here, and we're going to name it Arkanoid. So now we can load this scene, and when we double click it, it'll show this scene every time. So in order to have an Arkanoid, we need a ball. So let's right click here on the root node in the hierarchy, do add, and here you can see it's a few options of things you can add. We select sphere and there you go that's a good enough ball i guess we'll lighten it up a bit by selecting the ambient light go to the expandable menu here and let's set the intensity to one right so if you hit play now here you'll see that the sphere is present as the player will see it still a very boring game so what we need to do is we need to add physics to our game. In order to do that, we're going to install an extension that uses the Canon physics engine. And it's a free extension that you can download right here in the marketplace. So to download the extension, we're going to come to the marketplace right here on the top right. There's this icon, just click it and the marketplace will open. So it might take a bit of time the first time sometimes. So uh, just be patient, wait for it to load. This is the package we need, the rogue Canon physics. Just the first one here, just click on it. Right, so as you can see, there's the title, there's a the description with instructions and all the things you need to use the package. Now, uh, so we need to install it. So there's an install button, right? You're going to need to be logged in as I am here. So make sure you do that. It should take less than a minute. Now let's install. And there you go, there it is. So the package has been installed successfully now hit ok and we don't need this anymore so let's just close it as you can see now here in the assets folder we have now a rogue packages folder here and this folder contains the rogue canon folder which holds components and other assets that we can use within our scene so let's start adding the physics now so the first thing we need to do to add the physics is we'll need to add the configuration component for the row canon extension. We're going to add that into an empty object within our scene. So let's come here to the root node again, right click, add object 3D. This is equivalent to a game object in Unity basically. So let's click that. We change the name to game logic, right? We'll hold some stuff here. It's just, you know, a placeholder name. Basically we pull it all the way to the top. So I like to have it right there. Now we're going to hit a and this will open all of these components have been added by the uh, extension that we have 
just added into our project. So here we have the Canon config component. We are going to click on that and just close this. You can close it with the close button or with ESC like that. So here we have a few configurations for the Canon config component. Uh, as you can see, it has the sub steps to set how precise you want the physics to be. We can just, we're just going to leave this as it is. Now we're going to add some physics to our ball here. So click this sphere. Let's call it ball. So just like that. There you go. Now we need to add a body to this. So hit A and here we have the Canon body component. As you can see, we can move with the up and down arrows and I can just select the uh, Canon body and press enter and here it is. So you can see uh, the Canon body has been added, uh, but we're going to need more than a body. We're also going to need a shape. We're going to need a collider for this ball. So hit A again and look for sphere. And there you go. There's the Canon sphere. Just hit enter. And there you go. There's our little sphere collider. Right. So that's all we really need for our ball. Now if you hit play, you'll see how it falls. There you go. So we have physics basically, but this is still a very boring game. So we need to add a frame for our ball to bounce around. Now, before we do that, one thing we need to do is we need to set the restrictions for the movement of our ball. We don't want our ball to move more than just in the X and Y axis, because this is going to be just a 2D game, basically, or at least it's going to move in a 2D world. So we do not need the set axis here. So we're just going to set that to zero in a linear factor. OK, because we don't want our ball to move on depth, right? We just want it to move on the X and the Y axis. And then we have the angular factor. This the angular factor set how we want it to react uh, to rotation. We do not want any rotation on our balls. So we're just going to set this to zero, right? So we can hit tab as well, just that, like that. Now that our ball is ready, we have a mass. We, it's a dynamic type body. This is all good. Now let's start with the frame. So to build a frame, we're going to create another empty object. So we're going to come here again, right click add, and let's do object 3D again. Select that, we'll rename it to frame. So now we're going to right click on frame, add, box hidden behind our ball here you'll see there's a box there it is so now we need to add another body right and we're going to need a box collider as well so let's look for a box collider cannon box and there you go so we have here the cannon body and the cannon box right so you, you can see the collider there i'm zooming with my scroll Right, so you can scroll there and zoom in, zoom out. So this is fine, but we need to set the frame to be somewhere where a ball can collide, right? So let's set it right below the box here. Now our frame is going to be 25 by 80. Let's set the scale on X to 25 so that we can have the bottom side here, okay? So if we click on the camera, you can see that there's the box down there, right? So you can see it in the miniature here. And if we hit play, right, you see it falls, both of them fall. So we need to click on the box and let's set the mass of the cannon body to zero, right? And let's say that it's static because we don't want this to move. This is a static object. Okay, so now when we hit play, the ball falls on it. But this is not good enough. We need the ball to actually bounce from the frame. To do that, we're just going to come here to the uh, game logic object. As you can see, there's the Canon config that we set up earlier. And there are these configurations that we have here. We have friction and we have restitution. Friction, we don't need any. And restitution is basically the bounce, right? So we're going to say the bounce is one. So it's going to uh, basically reflect the force receives in a collision right so if two objects collide with a certain force it's just going to reflect that force with the same amount so now we just hit play and there you go it's bouncing 
and it will bounce eternally. All right, you can hit play with Ctrl P as well, right? You can hit Ctrl P again, and it will go out of the play mode. So let's finish setting up our frame. Now click on the box here twice, right? The first time you click, it'll select the frame. The second time you click, it's going to select the child, which is the box, okay? So what we're going to do is set the uh, scale. 25 is going to be too little, so let's do 50, right? But we're going to need an extra 0 0.5 on the side, so let's do 51. And now we need the position, right, to be on Y to minus 40, okay? And it's gone out of the picture here, right? So we need to focus on it again. So let's navigate our scene. You can navigate your scene with a free camera mode as I'm using right here. As you can see, there's a, on the left top here, there's a camera icon. You can just click on that to toggle camera modes. You have the uh, orbit camera mode there. You can just orbit around uh, an object or you can use the free mode as I'm using here and use it as an FPS. Hold right click, and move with WASD, right? You can shift to move faster. There you go. Uh, this is my favorite mode, but some people like the orbit mode more. Let's move back a bit. There you go. Now let's select the box again, and we will duplicate it with Control D. And now this one will set this uh, position on Y to just 40. Okay. Uh, let's move a bit down like this. Okay. Let's put it right in front. Let's focus right in front. There you go. So now we're going to duplicate this again. Are we going to set the scale on X to one and the uh, Y position to zero? And then we're going to set the position on X to 25, right? So this is going to be the right one. And uh, we're going to set the scale on Y, right? So the scale uh, from top to bottom to uh, 40 like that. No, sorry, uh, this will be 80 like that. So now we select that box again. Make sure you select the box itself. Control D again. And now we move it to minus 25. And there you go. We have a frame. And all of our frames have a Canon body, right? With a mass of zero. They are static in a Canon box. So now if we hit play, you can see we can't really see the frame. So let's select the camera right and there's this handy uh, helper there it can show us if we are actually framing our scene and there's the um, uh, the miniature here so let's pull back right and there maybe let's set it to 100 okay there you go that's that's good enough uh, let's pull it up a bit right because we're going to need some UI on top there yeah so uh, let's put it right over there Right, there you go. So now we hit play. You can see the ball falling and bouncing. There you go. But it, it's not really nice because the ball bounces back, right? So in order for the ball not to bounce back, we can just select the game logic again and come to the Canon config object. And we're going to set the gravity on Y here to zero, right? So we had here that basically what's gravity right from top to bottom pulling our body down. So now we hit play and it doesn't move. Why doesn't it move? Because we have nothing to move it. So we're going to need to create a component to move our ball in a constant speed and bounce around in the frame. Now come back here to the uh, icon view and with the assets folder selected, right click here and now asset folder we'll create a folder called components and let's open it and now we're going to create our first component right click assets component we can create a, a normal component which is a typescript component or a component js which is basically a javascript component right uh, i'm going to use a normal typescript component because it's a lot easier believe me you can do it, you can follow along with the JS component if you want, but I really highly recommend using TypeScript as much as you can, really. It's, go it's really going to make your life a lot easier than you think. So just 
Let's click on that. Let's call it bow. And there you go. There we have a component. So this is basically just a, a TypeScript script. It has a .ts uh, extension, but it also has a .re pre-extension here. This just tells uh, the engine that this is a component we can drag and drop inside an object or just add inside an object as we have been doing with the Canon config, for instance, and other objects there. So we'll just select the bowl here, right? And we can just click A and select the bowl here. We can drag and drop it like this. There you go. So um, now we have our ball component there. It doesn't have any uh, fields or anything like this, all the components, but we're going to add some of them now. So in order to edit our component, uh, we can just double click it, or uh, I highly recommend you come to your whatever uh, code editor you're using and open the project folder directly here in VS Code, which is the one I'm using. I'll leave a link in the description if you don't know which one this is. You can come to File and just select uh, Open Folder here, and you can open the project folder. Make sure you open the whole project folder, right, like I have here, and not the assets folders alone, you know, because it, uh, that way you have access to uh, the static folder, which we're going to use as well, and other things here that uh, you might need. So make sure you open the whole folder. Now, uh, if we come to assets, and now components, you can see there's the bowl component here. And here's some layout that is already set for us. Let me explain a bit what we have in front of us. So basically this is a component. A component is a class that has a name of the component that we're creating and it's extending the component class, right? This just says this is a component, that's all, right? And the component class comes from the rogue engine library, which we are importing right here, right? We're saying we import everything from the rogue engine library with the name RE like that, right? We call whatever we want this, but this is the way it's done here. So we do re.component. So we have the awake method, the start method, and the update methods are already laid out for us here. The awake method is going to be executed right after the component is initialized. The start method is going to be executed right before the component begins the update cycle. And the update cycle finally uh, is going to uh, call the update method from our component. So everything we add here in this uh, method is going to happen once every frame. So basically the first thing we need to do is get the body component within the object that we are holding this component in, right? So uh, as you can see, here we have the Canon body, right? We need to get this component within this component in order to move the object, okay? So let's do that, okay? Um, so we're going to use only the awake method. We don't need the start method right now, so we are not going to use it. We're just going to uh, set the uh, variable to hold it in first, right? This is going to be a field within our object. Uh, it's going to be called body component. And since we're using TypeScript, I need to add the type. Uh, it's going to be a canon body like that, right? And if I hit enter, as you can see, it just adds it automatically, uh, right? Yeah, make sure there's the, the RE there. Uh, this is the canon body component within our project, right? So uh, let's do that. And uh, now we have to get it from the object. So we do this, right? This means this component dot uh, body component, right? So we get th these field that we have just created, right? We're going to set that to be uh, equal to uh, RE. This is the rogue engine di library that is imported right here, right? So the re.get component, right? And this is a function we're going to call and say canon body, right? The type of the uh, component that we want to get, right? And where do we want to get it from? We want to get it from this, right? From this component dot object 3D. So the object 3D that we have this component in, right? As simple as that. Right, nothing too fancy. Just we need to say as canon body here because we're using TypeScript, and uh, 
yeah, we could check for this to be of this type and all that. We're not going to worry about that right now. We're just going to say that we're getting this component of the type Canon body. That's all we really need, right? TypeScript needs to know, hey, this is a Canon body because this could return uh, basically nothing, right? If we don't have a Canon body. So right now, if we get an error because there's nothing there, we don't really mind. Make sure you save, right? Control S, right? And now we have our component body there. Um, now let's set a velocity now, right? So we do this dot body component dot body, right? So this is the body from the Canon library, okay? And we do dot velocity dot set, right? And this is basically uh, the velocity of the object. This is a vector three, so this is a three-dimensional vector, right? Uh, we can set the x, y, and z axis here. So we'll do 0 0.3 uh, by 0 0.7, right? And 0 on the z axis, right? So we're going to move basically a bit uh, to uh, the right, right? This is a bit to the right on the x axis. Right, and um, mostly to the top, so it's basically top right. So let's hit Control S to save this. And now, uh, when we come up here to our game, we can now hit play, and you can see the ball is barely moving there. It's almost not moving, right? So, and that's because uh, we have not set any kind of speed or anything. So, but it is moving right where we want it to move. Now we need to set some kind of speed for this. So let's create a field for our speed, okay? Uh, but we also need for a ball to move in a, at a constant speed, right? So we need the velocity, right? So we say, uh, we'll set a variable here called const velocity and set equal to this component, right? Dot body component. So we're going to get the body component and we're going to get the body again, right? The the body from the library and set and get the velocity. This is just to make it easy for us to use the velocity vector, right? This is just the same as using the whole thing, but now we have it stored here. All right, so we're going to do if, there's an if statement, right? We want to set a condition that if velocity dot length, this means that the sum of the parts of our vector is different. This is how we say that something's different than this dot, oh, we need a speed here. Yeah, we haven't set the speed. So we, we're going to set the speed here. I want to say speed. Uh, we're going to set it to something like, uh, I don't know, 50 there. And this speed, right? So if the sum of uh, the velocity uh, vector parts is different than 50, right? Or whatever speed we set there, we are going to do velocity that normalize and this way we set it to one again right basically what we did here manually and um but in the direction that it's going we're not modifying the direction we're just saying uh, setting the uh, length to one i'm saying velocity dot scale to scale that now we want to scale it to the speed that we uh, want the object to be in and we're going to set that to itself. This either creates a new vector for you or you can just use the same vector and that helps with uh, performance in JavaScript, right? Garbage collecting and all that, don't worry about it. Really just do it like this. This is the best way to do it. So now if we save this, make sure you save, Control S, right? You can come here, hit play and ta-da, it's moving. Look at that. And it's bouncing around. So we just wrote a few lines of code and we have a very nice bouncing ball. Right, so this is looking a lot better now than it was a few minutes ago, isn't it? Now, uh, let's hit stop. And now we want to maybe be able to set our speed from here because we, we really don't know if that's the speed we want. So in order to do that, we're going to need a decorate here. Uh, so we're going to do at re, right? This is the way we set a decorator dot prop. And this is a function, right? And decorators are basically just functions that are uh, 
proceeded with an at like that, right? And we uh, do number, right? Between quotes like that, right? We're telling the engine that this is a prop of the type number. So now if we save this, we come back here and there you go, we have a speed and it's 50. And we can set this to, uh, let's move the option here so you can see if we set it to 60, it's going to start moving faster, right? You say to, you know, 70, it's going to move faster. See that? All right, that's what we want. So let's hit Ctrl P. So now we're going to add the paddle, right? We have a ball, we need a paddle, right? So uh, before we do that, don't forget to save your scene, Ctrl S to save it, or you can come here to Rogue Engine, save scene, right? If you want to do that very consciously, uh, that's very important you do that. Uh, so now let's come here to the Arkanoid root node and do add box, right? So we have another box here. Uh, we're going to move it to uh, about down here, uh, uh, a bit, a bit more to the top. Of the man, it's thirty-two. I liked. Okay. So and uh, we're going to make it about somewhere, you know, between uh, twelve or fifteen on the x axis here, right? You can set twelve if we want something harder. <laughs> we can set something to maybe uh, thirteen. Something like that, right, right in the middle. Um, I think that's that's good enough, right? So let's let's move right here to the front of it. Yeah, there you go. I think that's that's nice, isn't it? So save the scene because we have a paddle there. A click on the box uh, and let's call it paddle. Yep. So we have a paddle. We called it paddle, and now if we hit play, right, you can see that it doesn't even do anything because it needs a body, it needs a, a controller to move it, right? So let's do that. Let's start by adding the uh, body and let's add a Canon uh, box, right? So let's add that, right? As you can see, it's been added here. There you go. And you can see the collider over there, can you? Right, so let's save the scene. Remember always to save your scene. And now uh, let's hit play. And, oh, it bounces, but it, look at that. Where's our paddle, where it's going? Look at that. It's also bouncing and it's moving everywhere. No, yeah, we, we don't want that. And it's also going out of the camera. So let's just uh, hit stop. And let's come to our camera first. So that, make sure that it's going full depth and everything we need. So. The far here says how far we can see from our camera. We've set the position of the camera to 100, so uh, on the Z axis. So basically, uh, we need to set this to somewhere more than 100. So we'll do one, maybe um, set to 200. I really, we really don't care, something above 100. Back to the paddle now, right? Uh, the paddle has a mass of one. This means that it's been affected by physics. It's dynamic. Right, we want this to be dynamic. It's okay, and uh, and it's okay to have a mass. Uh, in fact, let's set it a really high mass so that we can uh, hit the ball and uh, you know and make it move and all that. But we don't want this to move on the y axis or on the z axis. We really don't want that. We don't want the ball which has a mass of one affecting it. So that's why we set a very high mass, and uh, we so that our uh, body here affects that. But we don't want it to move on the um, y-axis or on the z-axis, we also do not want it to rotate by any means. So let's set those to zero. All right, let's save this, Control S. And now we need to add a component to control our paddle, right? Because this is good and all, but it's just going to bounce from it. There you see that the ball is bouncing around, right? But this, this is not good enough. To create a paddle component, we're just going to right-click, Asset, component again, and we'll do paddle. There you go, so we have a paddle component. Uh, we're going to add it here to our paddle. Uh, we have to wait for the engine to stop transpiling the code and all that. Uh, we can drag and drop it again, right, like that. Uh, so now, let's code this, right? So you double click it, and it opens here, 
magically, right? Uh, if you have your folder open here, you, you can see that it already opens within the context of your uh, project folder. So for the paddle, we're going to get the component, same as we did with the uh, with the ball, right? So we're going to do um, body component and canon body, right? Because we're using TypeScript. Again, we need to type, right? And uh, as you saw there, when I hit enter, it just imported it automatically, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to remove the uh, start method again, same as we did before. We're going to do this dot body component equals again re dot remember this right get component canon body this object 3d as canon body again as we did with the other one now uh we are going to move the paddle uh with the movement of the x-axis of the mouse right so let's create a little variable called const uh this is just a constant variable so it's just a variable we, it's not going to change uh within our method right the same as we were doing for now uh movement x uh, equals re right the rogue engine library again dot input right this is the input controller for the uh library um we're going to select the mouse right and this is going to be the uh, movement x of the mouse right so here we have just the movement x of the mouse just to make it simpler for us to get the uh, movement on the x-axis okay and um, we're going to do this dot body component dot body so the body of the canon uh, physics library and we do dot position right so we're going to set the position of that body dot x plus equal this means that we're going to sum whatever value this axis has plus whatever we add here it's going to be movement uh, x we're going to sum the movement in the x axis of the mouse to the x axis position of the body but we're going to need to uh, set some kind of speed for this right so we can set a um, right kind of a mouse sensitivity kind of thing right so uh, we'll create again another variable here. We we'll set a field for it, same as we did before. Prop um, number, so it's going to be a field of a type number, and uh, it's going to be called speed, right? And it's going to be equal, uh, I don't know, six. I don't know. Um, we're going to multiply this to uh, this speed. Right, uh, but we also need to multiply this by re dot runtime. This is the basically uh, the controller that is running uh, our components, our methods. Right, this is the, the controller that running our components, basically uh, the runtime of our game, basically of our app. Right, and we are going to need the delta time. This is the time that has passed between frames. Right, between the last frame and this one, this is the time that we need. Otherwise. We're going to move at the speed of our frame rate. We don't want that to happen. So we want to move at the speed that we want it to move. So we're going to multiply it by delta time by saying, okay, just move at these rates of speed, right? This is basically what this is saying. Okay, so we move at a certain uh, in a certain axis, right? The, the amount that we're moving on the x-axis by the speed that we set here, by the precise time that has passed between the last frame and this one, All right? So we hit. Uh, save now, Control S, and we go back to our uh, to the engine. And if we, uh, yeah, it's here, right here. We have the uh, paddle and the speed. If we hit play, if we move, you can see that it moves. There you go, and you can hit the ball, and it moves. But it moves out of the frame, right? We don't want it to move out of the frame, do we? Like, what's the point if it moves out of the frame? Does it like? To, doesn't work like that so we need to limit the uh, movement on the x-axis right so to do that we're going to also get fancy and do that with a um, with a field here are right, we going to call it I'm just copy pasting this field and create another one called x limit right 
I'm going to set it to uh, 25, which is the limit that we have on the uh, x-axis for uh, our frame. So we're going to come down here, we're going to do say if uh, this, the body component, the body, right, dot position, dot x is smaller than minus this, dot x limit. So whatever limit we have set here in our uh, field, right? So we are going to say if this is the case, we so if this is if it's moving uh, too much to the left, we're going to say this the uh, body component the body that position dot x is going to be equal to minus this dot x limit. Okay, so basically this is saying right that if we're moving too much uh, more than the limit to the left, we set it to the limit, right? Uh, so now we say uh, we're going to make another of these statements, right? Same one, right? Only saying uh, we'll say else if, right? So if this is not the case, else if this is the case that uh, we're moving more than the positive limit. So it's if our position is greater than the x limit, we're going to set it to the x limit, right? So hit save now. We can come back here and we hit play and you see that it limits. Yeah, it works. It limits it, but we're not accounting for the dimensions of the, um, of the paddle, right? So let's do that very easily. We need to, uh, hold a variable here. I'm going to need another field, uh, going to make it a private field. This basically means that it's not accessible through other components. So another component can't uh, access this field. We don't want other components touching this or other classes or anything. So uh, we'll call this um, actual x limit. This will be a number, right? And in the awake method here, we'll set this to um, this that actual x limit will be equal to this dot x limit mm, and we need to set it to half of the size of our um, half of the scale on x of the paddle right so we do this that object 3d so the object 3d holding this component that we know is the paddle and we know scale that this uh, this object 3d has all of the uh, functions all the all of the properties and functions that we need to handle an object 3D and it has the scale in it and we set the X of the scale uh, sorry we get the X of the scale and we divide it by 2 the limit minus half of the scale of our paddle is the actual X limit right and uh, instead of using the X limit here we're going to use the actual X limit so now if we come back to our scene now we do play and there you go. So now it's limited to uh, the amount of uh, maximum movement we can move there. Yeah, so it's, there you can see the ball bounces. There you go. Hit play again. So now that we have a ball and a paddle, we need a brick, right? Because that's the other element of an arcanoid. So let's come here back again to the root node. Let's do right click, add box again okay. another box yes let's set this to something like uh let's say i don't know maybe 10 on the uh, x-axis uh the scale of the x-axis maybe something like 10 by 2 yeah that should work shouldn't it no right. let's put it up here a bit say maybe yeah I'll just do something like 10 like that right and see how it looks uh, Looks okay, doesn't it? Maybe a bit smaller. You can say something like um, eight, probably. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I think that's a pretty decent uh, brick. <clears throat> Let's set this uh, right there in the middle. Let's leave it there. Yeah, just an uh, X zero, and obviously always set should be zero for position. Uh, so, yeah, we need something to uh, 
collide with this, right? So let's do A, enter there for the cannon body. Uh, we also need a cannon box, right? So let's use that. And again, right, uh, we need to limit the movement here. In this case, we don't want this to move at all, right? So we do zero, zero. I want actually just by setting the mask to zero would work, but uh, yeah, let's just set all of these to zero just in case, you know. This will allow us to hit the box and then we'll get the collisions from the box, right? So there you see how it collides and yeah, we can uh, get that collision and destroy the brick as the ball collides with it, right? So the only thing colliding with the brick will be the ball itself, right? Remember to save your scene, control S, and now we'll create uh, the brick component. Okay, so let's come here again, right? Remember that? Right click here, assets, component, let's do brick. All right, now it's remember that it's uh, transpiling the code and doing its work there. Now we double click this and here you go. Now, we're going to make this quite simple. We're just going to use uh, for now the, uh, the the start method, right? We don't need nothing to update here. We just need um, uh, something to, we just need something to hold the collision event for this, right? So we're going to get the body component as we did with the others, right? Body component, right? So get a cannon body like that, okay? This is the component, again, same component. Remember how it's imported automatically if you're using visual code. Otherwise, you have to write this line down. All right, um, this dot body component equals, remember this, i.e. the get component, cannon body, this object 3D has cannon body. There you go. Now we're getting the body component within this object right so we need to handle the collisions so we do this body component that on collide okay and this is a function that gets a callback function in it so we do like this right this is a narrow function right so we set uh, two parentheses there like that and a code block right this is how you create a narrow function a simple arrow function this could be in a variable there somewhere like this could be uh, const my func uh, function and the like this right and then just use my function here right but you know I prefer to do it this way to be honest so let's do it like that yeah there you go just to show you you know in case you uh, this is the first time you see that now this object 3d right this is this is what we want to do we want to delete this object 3d if right we are colliding right because this is a brick right we know this we know we're adding the brick class the brick component to a brick right so we'll do this object 3d dot parent right and now we're going to do a little trick here with question mark that says if it has a parent right we do dot remove right this is all 3js stuff right this is the 3js object 3d it has the parent of the object right uh, so it says I want the parent of this object to remove it right so we say this object 3d right so we'll tell the parent remove me if um, if, if, if he has a parent, right? Because the parent is optional. It always has a parent here, but it will complain if you don't add it. If, if you're using uh, TypeScript, it will complain. So just use the question mark. It'll always have a parent if it's here, but you know, just in order for it not to complain, just do that. That's okay. Um, so yeah, that should be it. Uh, now save this. And we need to add the component to our uh, brick. So we'll do A, and let's look for brick. I was right there in front of me, wasn't it? Now let's hit play, and 
You see that? It was removed almost immediately. Okay, so now we need to build a brick wall. The first thing I like to do is uh, select here the bowl and let's move it a bit down here, right? Because we're going to be moving on this direction, right? Like this, and we want to give it some uh, some space to move before it hits any bricks. Uh, so now let's select the brick. Let's call it brick, okay? Like that. Okay, so now we have a brick. Uh, let's create an object as we did before, like an empty object 3D, like that. And we'll select it and call it brick wall. Now that we have the brick wall object, we're going to leave it on the uh, zero, zero, zero there on position, right? And we're going to add the brick to it. So we drag the brick object and drop it. When that's selected over there, just drop it there. And you, see, you can see now the uh, brick is part of the brick wall. If you move the brick wall, right, it will move with it. So, you know, we'll set it back to zero. There it is. And um, so uh, this would be our first line of bricks, right? So we'll do that. We'll create lines of bricks uh, to make it simpler. Uh, we'll create another object inside and uh, maybe, you know what, maybe this object will, yeah, we'll just call this brick wall. Okay. Oh, sorry, brick, uh, brick line, right? And uh, we'll bring this one inside the brick line. And now if we set this to zero, right? We'll, we can move the brick line a bit, right? So we move the brick line to 10, okay? And the brick moves with the brick line. And the brick is at zero, zero, zero because it's uh, relative to the parent, right? So it's a zero, zero, zero relative to the parent, which is at zero, 10, zero. Okay, now uh, what we do is um, we need to duplicate this brick. So we hit uh, Control D to duplicate it. So you can see it's uh, created over there and it's been selected and now up here at the uh, top left you can see there's a, a little snap button you know this little uh, magnet just click it and now you can set the amount you want something to snap so we'll do this we know it's eight the scale is eight uh, so we'll do maybe 8.5 okay so we, we snap with the uh, 0.5 gap okay we want to leave and um, we'll say accept there and now we hit shift right and we click here on the X and we move and there you go we just have snapped that to the uh, to the left now control D again uh, shift click move and it snaps okay now we'll do that from the middle again now we do control D and shift, click, move to the right. You see how it snaps the side like that. Just point it there. Control D, shift, click, move. Okay. So now we have a brick line there. I think that's a good enough brick line, isn't it? So uh, we can now just simply duplicate the brick line. We do Control D, duplicate that brick line. And we can set the snap now to the top. Right, so we know it's two on the y axis of the scale. So we do 2.5, right? And we say shift, right? And move on the y axis, top, like that. Right, we do control D and um, shift, move up, you know? Again, control D, shift, move up, like that. Control D, shift, move up, like that. Control D, shift, move up, like that. Control D, shift, move up. Control D, shift, move up. Control D, shift, move up. And that should be enough bricks, isn't it? Oh, a brick ball there. Looking nice, doesn't it? And uh, just move it like that. And um, let's close it down. You can see we have all our brick lines here inside the brick ball. So, uh, uh, yeah, now we can hit play and see how, yeah, we can, we can play this already. This is already a playable kind of playable game 
Alright, that's it for the first part. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like and a comment down there. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to get notified when a new video comes up. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.